Hey there YouTube, PD Two Finger here, and today I wanted to talk about PedalPCV.com. This is a supplier for guitar effects, pedal, uh, PCVs, printed circuit boards. You buy the printed circuit board, usually they're under 20, um, and you pop the parts in, resistors, capacitors, chips, ICs, uh, transistors, solder that all up, and then you got a guitar pedal. Pretty cool stuff. Now, the thing, if you been around or you're into guitar effects building, you know that the lion's share of the stuff is pretty basic circuits, meaning overdrive, distortion, fuzz. Yeah, there's reverbs, delays, filters, all kinds of stuff out there. But more recently, companies like EQD, Earthquaker Devices, coming out with these crazy modulated pitch filtering delay things that have weird names like the underside of the dark portal. You know, $329, $279 for this pink thing that's covered in knobs that, you know, you put a C note in and a rainbow comes out of the thing. These type of really weird noise making, more um, intensive, complicated effects that would be way above my head. You know, typically I think you need some um, uh, EEPROM chips, the unusual functionality that some of these things have. So you have to have an EEPROM burner or uh, digital, you know, coding, it's all that type of stuff is, you know, I'm more of a 555 timer IC with a capacitor and a resistor makes a square wave, you know, I can get that. But this type of stuff is really way advanced. And lo and behold, that's where pedal PCB comes in because they sell guitar PCBs with um, custom burnt EEPROMs that come with them. They charge you a little bit more because you're not just getting the the PCB, you're getting this custom program chip. So rather than 8 or 10, it's 16 because you get the chip that's custom programmed. And so it's a great deal. And then they also have this FE1 digital reverb multi-effect chip thing that I don't really comprehend but it's in use in quite a few of their more advanced uh, projects. So <clears throat> for around 35 bucks, it's 34, or 36 in some cases, you'll get everything you need. Now when I say that, I'm talking about the PCB and the goofy chips or the more complicated hardware. The standard resistors, capacitors, and op amps, the knobs, the potentiometers, the stomp switch, the LED, the chassis, of course, you are going to have to provide that. So when I say for 36 bucks, I'm talking about the guts of the thing and the stuff that I really couldn't source anywhere else. So for for me, like I was doing a lot of Vero building, meaning building pedals from scratch on a board that has strips of copper, and I would use a drill bit and remove little spots here and there, and then cut in little wires to jumper it, and then add the components and solder in all the resistors, capacitors. So that you can only go so far with that the more advanced stuff you really need to have someone make this circuit board for you and you pay for that sorry i just had my breakfast it was granola cereal <laughs> in any event typically those pcbs will allow you to build a little bit more complicated stuff so i kind of switched over from building on vero to mostly pcb now and it's happy happy joy joy Working with PCVs is awesome compared. I mean, you pay for it. It's a couple of bucks more, but what you save in time, frustration, and I mean, Vero is still cool. I would still build simple stuff on Vero any day of the week, but PCVs are really the way to go. Now, the thing is that, like I said, that really complicated stuff, no one is coming out with it until today. I find pedal PCV and to start off, I want to address that I had said, well, the simple stuff, well, they have that. Their overdrive distortion and fuzz section has 114 circuits in it that you can buy. And they're all a good deal. They're, you know, eight bucks and up. So we have a lot of really cream of the crop and some very unusual, hard to find stuff that I've never seen anywhere, which is really cool about finding a new place that sells PCBs and then here's like, to me, that's like, this is a great day. They have uh, circuits by differential audio manifestations, or DAM, Crowther, Providence, Dodd, Wampler, Deep Trip, Boss, Way Huge, Wampler, Dark Glass, 
Vic, Vic Sonic. That's the X Pandora, the round chrome hockey puck distortion that ZZ Top had that bag of ditch weed and they plugged 11 of them in a row. And that must have been a real headache that day. Providence Stampede. Never even heard of that. The Love Pedal. More damn stuff. EQD or Earthquaker Devices. Love Pedal. Cornish. A little cork sniffing action, anyone? And then the GTC Bloody Finger. GTC is the guitar tone company. They make one thing, and that's the Bloody Finger. It's $275. And he's got a big list of endorsers like Billy Corgan says it's the best lead pedal I ever played. Adrian Ballou, I'm going to record my next song on it. Uh, what's his name? Reeves Gibrels. You know, this thing has more character than a, you know, bagel with schmear. Now, looking at the chrome dome distortion, that this is their PCB to build the GTC Bloody Finger. It's a CD4049 UBE. That's an unbuffered uh, CMOS chip. That goes back to the Craig Anderton tube sound fuzz or the Red Llama, or more recently, the guy that got into the fight with Will's Easy guitar. He has a quad damage fuzz. I'd be willing to bet it uses a CD4049 just because of the name of it. Either way, there's a quad op amp in there somewhere. Now, the unique thing about the Chrome Dome distortion, it uses a 42TM013 transformer. So here we're seeing PCBs with for these outlandish guitar pedals that you know it, go to type in GTC Bloody Finger and go to the page. It's it's a thrill ride. It's it's a rip roaring, knuckle busting, tummy grabbing circus of fun at that website. And you'll see uh, not only is it a uh, wild and wacky. Uh, advertising it uses an exotic component as well that trans transformer so definitely that's one that's on the top of my list now looking a look at the pitch section uh, I'm on their website looking at the pitch category they offer seven there's the EQD tentacle EQD bit commander ZVEX Johnny Octave death by audio robot I built one of those it was a pain in the neck very hard to do one of the weirdest pedals I ever built uh, it has a voice changer. Oh, yeah. One of those. I am a robot. It does that for your guitar, but there's there's some cool integrated madness inside of that thing. The harp is the EQD Arpanoid, and then the EQD Organizer, which I think that's like poly octave, polyphonic octave generator. Now, the Arpanoid, that's got to be a some kind of pitch thing. EQD has a lot of stuff that I don't. It's so expensive, I don't even, like, I would never be able to own that. So I don't even look at it because I don't want to feel bad about myself. So, yeah, it's a polyphonic pitch arpeggiator that costs $229 from Sweetwater Sound. <clears throat> so I'm guessing you would hit a C and that would go, ooh, yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. Something like that. <clears throat> Let's hear what Andy from... from from PGS agrees. So taking a look at the EEPROM section, there's eight different iterances of these EEPROMs that they sell. Um, they have the delay section, dynamics, accessories, faceplate they sell, modulation. The mo let's talk about the modulation. The depths, mid-fi clear or not, that's a really weird, uh, the harder you hit it, the more it bends the delay, the echo bends. And it's got like a fuzz you can kind of shut off. The Mid-Fi Pitch Pirate, that was on my list. I never could find a Vero or never built it. The Catlin Bread Pariadolia. That's a harmonic mesmerizer. Ooh, big words. The EQD C Machine, Love Pedal Vibronaut, Mutron Phaser 2, and then the Mutron Biphase, which that, it's 18 bucks for that, but it's huge. You put it in a big box... It's going to have some clunk, 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 little switches, probably some factuals and some, like, oddball components. That's going to be a big bomb, a big build for a big boy. Those, if you look on um, eBay right now, there is one uh, Mutron biphase for $775. That's like the king modulation effect. 
You know, but they got the EQB, EQD Hummingbird, the Bug Effects Daydream, which is this really tripped out uh, filter delay where it's like pings off these like trippy filters in the delay repeats. The Module 8, which is one of their multi effects um, units, which I'm going to talk about those. The VHS is the JHS VCR, or Volume, Chorus, and Reverb. Now, Reverb, you think, oh, I got to buy a belt ton and brick. No. A lot of these projects, the ones that are <clears throat> using utilizing time, uh, they use the FV1 chip. He stuck with this FV1 spin, FV1 IC, which I'm not sure if it's a multi effect. I'm guessing it's a multi effect chip. It's that multi effect IC. And it's a micro size SMT, SMD, which I can't really deal with that because I don't have. I have traditional soldering iron, and I use through hole. So when you order it, he will solder it to the board for you for no charge. Which it, like that enables me to be able to do this. So this it's getting it's gone from like pretty cool to like unbelievably cool to like mind blowing at this point. It's so cool what they have to offer at this place. I just had to make a video and show you guys. And I apologize for the length of this video. I'm trying to. To share everything that I found that blew my mind. So there's a triple delay. And I'm clicking on that. That has a modulated delay, a tape delay with an adjustable degradation. And then uh, the space delay is multi-tap filtered delay, which I would love to hear what that sounds like. And I'm going to find out. Because a lot of this stuff is on my list already. The DMD2 is a 900 second digitally modulated delay. And this is not the PT2399 chip. I'm sorry. It's all based off of that FV1 spin IC. The Kaleidoscope, again, that's that trippy filtered ping delay. The Module 8, let's take a look at what that, this is their multi, one of their multi-effect pedals you can build, has three control knobs besides the mix mode and volume control. So this offers a, a phaser with rate depth and regeneration on those three controls plus the mix and volume. Then a flanger, same controls. Chorus, similar controls with a double voice control. Harmonic tremolo with a spectrum control. Uh, is that a fancy word for tone? Hmm. Pulse tremolo, ring modulation with carrier one, mix and carrier two controls. Pitch modulation and auto filter. What a cool pedal. Rate, depth, low pass and high pass controls. What an awesome idea. Build, build this thing for 35 bucks to get the PCB and all the goofy chips that you need. So that's the Module 8. They have the Arachnid, which I'm not sure on that one. We have the Octagon, which is listed. Again, three controls, mix mode and volume. We have Shimmer Reverb, Modulated Reverb, Modulated Delay, Pitch Delay, Bit Crusher, Dual Pitch Shifter, Harmonic Tremolo, and Daydream. So... <laughs> I I gotta tell you, the only effect in that list that I don't think I would use is the dual pitch shifter. So this is like incredibly cool. This is how much how much are we at here? It's thirty five bucks to get the PCB and the goofy chips, which it's two chips. You get the FV one, which they solder on the board if you ask them. If you're not able to do your own SMT type soldering, and then the EPROM, the custom program EPROM is included with the price of the PCB. It is a 2.4 LC32A EEPROM loaded with eight algorithms. It's called, they call it a microcontroller. Includes rotary selector microcontroller. So yeah, you get the rotary switch. So they're, gi they're giving you the goofy parts too, for the most part. Um, back to this list. The three verb is a, a hypernova is a modulated reverb. The glimmer is a shimmer reverb, and then it includes the radium springs, which is their spring reverb. Very very cool stuff. I don't even know what a shimmer reverb. I'm wondering if that has uh, octave up overtones. Probably does. And then there's the Pythagoras multi effect platform, which is ten dollars. And again, I'm not sure on how that works with the EEPROM, but that's only $10. Now, taking a look at 
this stuff. It's tough for me to pick which one I would want or for my first purchase. I know I want to get the Bloody Finger, the GTC one, the Chrome Dome, and then running through all of these advanced effects, I came across something there. Where is it? Unison Double Tracker. Now, this is going back to John Lennon. He used to sing a lot of his vocals two times, so they would record them twice, and then they would pan those hard right and left. So it gives this real full, unique sounding vocal, and it's tricky to do because when you're singing, you don't realize how much of that is automatic. The fades, the vibrato, how your breath works. So you have to really, really think about how you're singing when you lay your first track down, and the same thing to try to match take one. And then you'll all of a sudden you'll keep having a mistake at one part and it won't match up and you re you'll realize it's not me making a mistake now. I made a mistake in track one. So you got to go back and redo that. And then things start getting real cuckoo. So double tracking vocals is not... John Lennon was really good at it, but he was John Lennon. And eventually he got sick of doing it because it was such a time-consuming process. And you have to get yourself in this proper headspace to do it. And he said something to the... Uh, engineers at Abbey Road. He said, couldn't you guys put together some kind of a machine, figure out how I wouldn't have to sing all these vocals two times? And so they did. And it was called the ADT, Automatic Double Tracking. And that's an effect that's used to this date. It's in a lot of recordings. I use a chorus and I turn the rate off so it doesn't move at all. And then I will tune the depth so this is almost like a micro delay, like a super tight delay, like right around between 8 and 36 milliseconds. And I will tune that to react to the major, like the root of whatever, the, let's say the song's in A, I'll tune it to spike at A or spike at E if I want it. However it works, I a lot of times I would just leave it tuned to an A. And as far as getting the rate to stop moving, you can disconnect the middle knob on the rate. You can have a, a toggle switch for that, and that will disable the LFO. So that's how you can do that if you have a chorus pedal that won't stop spinning, even if you turn it all the rate all the way down. That's how you're able to do that. Some of the some of the chorus pedals naturally do, like um, the Dodd FX, the old chorus did that, and that's how I discovered how much I love that sound especially with an overdriven or a dirty guitar sound. So this Unison Double Tracker has three modes. Dual Detune, which is probably wacky, modulated, which is less wacky but still moving, and then the Double Take, which is this slight delay. This is what I would be after, especially if there would be a way to envelope control that. I think that would sound really interesting. So it has three reviews. We're looking at Absolutely killer on bass, adds depths without being seasick, and keeps all your low end intact. Awesome sounds in this circuit, great possibilities of thicken up your sounds, can give a great faux chorus and flanger sounds on a detuned setting. Highly recommended. And then David says this is probably the best pedal on the site, but it's a very subtle effect. It's one of those pedals which you use and you wonder what the fuss is all about, but when you turn it off you suddenly really realize what a difference it made to your sound. I leave it on most of the time now, and it sounds great, which is, that's how I would have this at the end of my chain, and leave it on. Now, I hate to drag this into the dirt. There was another company in 2016 that came out with the pedal that did this. They were the first ones to do it. They actually told me they were going to, uh, was going to demo that product for them. And I never got the, the, they never shipped the unit. And the demo came out, and it was a blonde woman singing, Babe, I'm going to leave you. A gorgeous blonde girl, young girl. So I contacted them again, and they ignored me, and then I sent another email and said, look, I, I get it, but could you at least send me one of your effects to demo, please? And they never contacted me. So I brought it up publicly when I ran into Keeley on a forum or Facebook, something like that. I brought it up, or I made a comment on one of their videos that I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust that company. And he came in and said, what's this all about? And I told him. And he said, I went back through all of our emails and we've never had any records of talking to you. So I hate to drag this into the dirt, but they, they, I contacted them and asked them permission to do a demo. And rather than when they changed their mind saying, hey, it didn't work out, 
they just re refused to. They they chose to not let me know. Then when I asked them, they chose to not respond. Two times. Then when I brought it up and confronted him, like a year later, or what it wasn't. It was like three months later. Um, some Kiwi thing came out and it was a big deal. And I said, yeah. See, all everyone was saying how they the company was. Robert Cooley walked on water, and if he made a sandwich, it would uh, taste like golden nuggets. and All this crazy stuff about how great of a guy he was. And I said, that wasn't my experience. They really hurt my feelings when I dealt with them. And he came he came and confronted me personally. What are you talking about? And I said, well, it's, you know, and I explained to him what happened. And he came back and publicly and denied the whole thing. He said, I never have, we don't have any record of your email ever. So that... You know, if you promise me something and it doesn't work out, I understand. But in that case, I think Keeley could have afforded to just let me have a demo unit. Say, we don't, you know, we don't want you to make the video. Why did they say that they loved my work? They knew who I was and they loved my work and they wanted me to do it. And then here comes Blondie. So I, I have no idea what that was all about. Um, unfortunately, that's the way it happened and I never got the... MS30 from Keeley. So I'm going to build my own. I'm going to build a Unison Double Tracker from Pedal PCV. It would be great to be able to do some demo work for this company. Uh, if not, I completely understand. But I wanted to share this company with you guys because they're making the most advanced guitar PCV stuff on the market. If anyone knows of anything that's superior to this, please let me know. I would love to know because I would be ordering ASAP. This is really cool stuff. Thank you for joining me, P2 Finger, bringing you Pedal PCB. May all of your circuits fire up the first time. And if someone promises you a demo unit, I hope it shows up. I hope you do better than I did, because that was the last experience that I had with trying to put myself out there. And since then, I've been kind of, I just haven't done it. You know, I, I don't take that type of rejection very well. So, anyway. Thanks, guys.